The leg is built, so I'm going to move on and we'll do his body next. So I've got a blank layer here and I'm just going to go ahead and draw the ball. And make it approximately the right size, about like that. Let's see. That's good enough. All right, let's bring it over here. I don't need this anymore. I'll hide that. All right. So let's go ahead and symbolize this body. And there's some stuff happening inside of this one. Uh, we think about uh, how this body's going to move, right? So there's probably going to be some squash and stretch, you know, some bounce on it as, as he's kind of bopping up and down. He's also got this little vest that he's wearing. And uh, I, I could draw it as a static image, but I, what I want to do as I'm thinking about this is, is this cat's going to walk. And in a walk cycle, you've got all kinds of opportunities for different kind of movement. And one of the things that um, in a three-quarter view like this is a walk, one of the things that kind of helps give it a little more appeal is if you can introduce some, some depth to it, some rotation of the hips and the shoulders and the head, some body twist, which is what I have built in here, right? There's, it's subtle, it's hard to see, but let me see if I can isolate this. There's a lot happening in here. The body's squashing and stretching, it's bouncing. It's also kind of it's going up and down, left and right. But when, if you look really closely, it's kind of hard to see, but it's also, there's a little bit of twist happening in there. You know, it feel, it's supposed to feel like uh, this front plane of the, of the ball, I guess, this front, this front part of the ball is rotating around in space to face us slightly. I think it's more evident here with the armhole and the, and the vest. It's rotating back and forth. So the way that's happening is I have this whole vest, which is a very flat image, and the vest is stretching out in a way that's uh, supposed to feel like it's wrapping around. So it's foreshortened here, so it's narrower, and then it gets wider and it goes to the back. So whenever we see this with the masking effect working, there's a little bit of slide back and forth. So I'm uh, going to use a mask and I'm going to use another shape of, of the vest and I'm going to sort of build that out. So my body is there. I'm going to, here's a shortcut too. If you've got a, a named symbol in your library and it exists on an unnamed layer in your timeline, if you just select that one thing and say distribute to layers, which is uh, control shift D, you get, it'll name the layer, whatever the symbol is. So that's kind of a handy shortcut. All right. So I'm going to go in to my symbol here. And this is going to be my body. I'm going to make a new layer for the vest. And I should label these as I go so I know what's what. And it's useful to build things on separate layers, mostly because they're going to move independently of each other. But also, when you have things on separate layers, they won't flatten out and, and connect to each other and kind of get stuck to each other whenever you want to move them around. So uh, I'm just going to draw, and I'm doing this all with a mouse, by the way. I'm not using a stylus or any kind of fancy tablet for any of this stuff. You know, so it actually can be faster to draw with a mouse sometimes, especially if you're doing this kind of object-oriented uh, design. So the vest, one of the things that I need to give it some more corners, so I'm going to delete that and maybe that too. But one of the things about uh, this vest is it's, it's larger. It extends beyond the bounds of the... Uh, of the body shape, kind of like these two trapezoids that are sort of joined in the middle. And uh, I'm gonna try that, I'll group that. Actually, here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get fancy. I'm gonna group it, I'm gonna symbolize this. We'll call this half vest, and here's why. I can now duplicate this symbol, this layer, and I can where are we at? Transform, flip it. So I'm using sort of the fact that uh, 
animate uses symbols as instances. These are both two instances of the same thing. And that's useful to me because if I make changes to one, it's going to make changes to the other. And if you want something symmetrical, I guess it's the end. If not, you're kind of out of luck. But in this case, I do want it to be symmetrical. So I go in here and I can go inside of this symbol. And now I can do things like, uh, you know, I can pull out the back end. Whoops. Pull out the back end of this and see it's affecting that. You know, I can get a little bit of a swoop that. And uh, I can go in here and I can add another layer and I can put my little kind of fake plaid effect in there, which is just lines. I can go back into my properties and it's, uh, make this like a, it's a pretty small line. Let's try that and see what happens. We'll lock this and it's too small to even see. All right, let's make it bigger. That size needs to be okay. All right, so let's just keep on drawing these lines. Boop, 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 and I can go in here a little closer. Give a little bit of girth. And I'm going to, I don't want to intersect and flatten out, so I'm going to make a new layer here for the horizontal ones and just keep drawing. There. All right, those lines are a little heavy. Let me knock them back a little bit. Like a two. Okay, oh, he needs a little button. All right, so it's horizontal, vertical. And if I put a button here, it's going to put it on the other side. So I'm going to back out here and uh, put the vest, I'll make the button up here. And I don't know what color that was. I'll just go in here and I'll make it white for now. I can always change it later. All right. So there's my vest. And oh, I need a norm hole. I'll go back in here again. And this will help me locate where the shoulder is. Uh, later on, whenever I want to um, track the shoulder to match, in, you know, where the arm would connect to it. Put it right there. All right, so we can back up. So now uh, I've got my body. So there's the button, the vest, what's this? That's nothing. All right, get rid of that. So these need to be combined together. Let's call this vest. And now, Give that to layers so that it's the right name. Okay. Whoops. All right. So there's the body of the vest. So we're going to do this. We're going to take the body. We're going to duplicate it and make this a mask and show masking. Whoops. Wrong layer. All right. So now. That's how masks work. Any layer can be a mask for another layer. And the layer that is a mask 
becomes called the window and anything that's uh, underneath it, indented underneath it, becomes what you see through the window, right? The mask and the image. It's a little bit not right, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that for now. I'm going to bring my vest up here a little bit like that. Oh, and my, I lost my button because it was, it's in there, I think. It's just, it wasn't, it's got, since it was just a shape, it wasn't a group or a symbol, it ended up being underneath. So if I arrange this and put this in the back, oh, where's that at? Arrange, send it back. My button should appear. Oh. Let's try this. Okay, so uh, what I do is I selected everything, and then I shift and then selected the stuff that I know is already symbolized, which left only the shape uh, selected, and then I hit Control G to group it. And once it was grouped, um, kind of in the natural order of things, it kind of raised up to the top. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Ah, that's pretty good. Okay, now the head. Um, I'm not going to go through uh, and walk through the whole thing because it's going to be super time consuming. But the head is basically built the same way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw it all and then I'll pop back in um, once I have it all built and we can talk about that.